Welcome to the Get Better Project, where your host Joe Bauer interviews the world's top fitness, endurance, and strength athletes to figure out what has propelled them to the top of their game. Let's be great. Let's be great. Listen, learn, and start getting better today. Here we go. Welcome to the Get Better Project, where I'm excited to have Dave Spur and John Gibson of Only Training, the program for athletes looking to compete and dominate in the sport of fitness. Dave and John have a really cool approach to how they do their programming. It's something different than what I have encountered before. And having been an endurance athlete for many years myself, it's something that I've felt has been missed in the sport of CrossFit training. So if you've ever been a CrossFit athlete and felt like you were prepared, but you're missing some form of the endurance base, or you just feel like you're not quite conditioned enough, they're really tackling some of these questions with doing interesting stuff around heart rate training and how they they tackle their volume on their program. So if you are looking to get into a competitive training program that could legitimately take you to the next level, you'll want to listen to this podcast. I believe that uh, Dave and John have a really unique history as far as training goes and how they were brought up and the things that they think are important in CrossFit. So without further ado, let's jump right into the podcast with Dave Spur and John Gibson of Only Training. Dave, John, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Not doing too bad. How are you? Doing good, man. Just uh, living the life up here in Alaska right now. Where are you guys at? I'm, uh, I'm in Winnipeg, Canada, and uh, Gibby, Gibby's in Prince George. British Columbia. Very cool. Well, uh, I've been following you guys actually for, gosh, a while now on Instagram, stalking you a little bit. So I don't know if you guys know that. But um, I'm excited to talk with you today. And I actually am interested with you guys as as I am with all the people that I talk to and kind of your backstory. So um, I think it's really interesting to hear how people got to the successes that they have today. And I would love to start with you, Dave, um, and then we'll get to John after that. But like, if you could co- go into you know, the time machine and tell us where you grew up, how you grew up, and how that led you to CrossFit and Olympic lifting. Yeah, cool, for sure. Um, way, way back, I guess everything started. I started playing hockey when I was like three years old. Um, grew up in a small town about 15 kilometers east of Winnipeg. So winters were insanely cold, uh, but we had outdoor rinks and didn't seem to care. So my whole life, you know, my whole childhood was hockey in the winter, baseball in the summer, hockey in the winter, baseball in the summer. Um, Come from a really athletic family. Uh, Dad was actually a high nationally ranked racquetball player um, at one point. (laughs) Um, But yeah, he, uh, he did a lot of coaching on all my teams that I was on. Um, after, I mean, I played hockey all the way up until junior was never overly serious with it. Um, didn't really have any aspirations of taking it much further, but when I was about 17, 18, I started getting pretty serious with my golf actually, which not a people, not a lot of people know. Um, I was ranked fairly high as a junior in Canada when I was 17, I had a couple, um, scholarship offers to the U S, um, to play like div two schools, but nothing full ride and it just the the dollars were just a little much to to go and do that so never ended up uh playing any collegiate golf but um definitely love playing competitive golf a lot um it's funny now i still still tell people there's a lot of similarities between training and practicing golf um and olympic weightlifting and they just they don't understand that but like the, (laughs) the, the the mental uh battle i guess you could call it that goes on in those two sports is just kind of tied very close together so um yeah i really enjoyed both things but um my my crossfit life uh kind of just came randomly uh you know um started in about 2011 i believe Uh, a friend of mine um was into it started a gym here in winnipeg went and checked it out you know, hadn't done any really serious training in a few years or, you know, 
and was looking to get back into doing some kind of exercise and, you know, saw all the videos online, guys going crazy, um, looked like fun. And then like a lot of people just went and was kind of hooked right away. Right. Um, didn't really know what I was doing at all. Um, my training background was pretty limited up until that point. Um, but then luckily got introduced to my weightlifting coach, my Olympic weightlifting coach, Terry Hadlow, who's still to this day is my weightlifting coach who, um, has been probably the biggest influence on my life, uh, as far as training weightlifting, even in CrossFit, even though he, you know, he's old school and he's not, not super keen on the CrossFit, but, um, he, he understands why, what, why it's so big. Um, it's just not something he's into, but, um, I've learned a lot about training, not only in weightlifting, but I mean, you know, Terry has been known to coach, you know, NHL hockey players, volleyball players, football players. So he's got, you know, a, a, a full background and a full wealth of knowledge that he's kind of shared with me over the years. Um, and I've been lucky enough to kind of be around him for the majority of, you know, whatever, eight years or whatever, and having lots of chats with him. And so, uh, yeah, I, I guess CrossFit was the, f- the first competitive kind of season was, I guess for me, 2014, when I went to regionals on a team as well. Um, we were chatting earlier and you, you had been to that regionals. Um, went team that year. I was on a team in 2017. Um, and it was always kind of like, you know, favoring my weightlifting, I guess you could say, but could get the job done on a team in CrossFit, uh, individual CrossFit was never my forte. Um, and then just most recently my weightlifting, like now that I'm 36, but the last two years have been lifting as a master's weightlifter. So I've had really cool opportunities to go, um, you know, Pan American games for masters last year and this year, um, world championships this year. Um, and just kind of hoping to continue on with that while still kind of just messing around with, with CrossFit and, you know, training recreation with that stuff. Cool. What about CrossFit and weightlifting? Is it that, you know, keeps you coming back? Like what about those, those sports or each of them individually that you just love? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the same and it goes all the way back to, to playing golf. Like there's no, it just seems like there's no end, right? Like you're just chasing this like infinite, whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, in weightlifting, you know, you you snatch 125 kilos. Well, you know, that, that might've been like your ultimate goal two years ago. And now all you can think about is snatching 130, right? It's like, there's always this next thing. And like CrossFit's no different, you know, it's like, oh, you do whatever, I mean, you name a benchmark, you name a, you know, 5k run, whatever it is, you, you know, set a record. It's like, well, now I just got to go five seconds faster. <laughs> and like, yeah, or, you know, like whatever you, you win something and like, well, now you got to prove to yourself that it wasn't a fluke and you got to, you know, you got to do it again or whatever it is. Um, so I, th- I think that the, the, the fact that there's no, like, I mean, for me anyways, it might be different for someone who's a little bit more on the elite level. Like maybe they could be like, well, if I could ever win the CrossFit games, I could like easily walk away from this. You know what I mean? Whereas like, I don't, I don't really have goals like that. Like, um, I would like to win the world championships as a master's weightlifter, but even if I did win, I like that, that wouldn't be the point where I was like, well, that's good enough. You know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. about chasing like that one extra kilo over and over and over again so sure that's yeah, man. that's cool i like it i feel the same way it's kind of about the the process more than the destination and yeah 100 percent, man like I, I i i do love i was talking to a buddy of mine actually the other day about this i love the rush of competing if there's like there's nothing like it um but there's also a lot of things that go with competing that like i'm not a huge fan of that like surround it. Um, I don't think I'll get into too many details about that. I think a lot of them are personal, but you know, weekly, daily, I love training. Like I just love training. So um, whether or not competition was part of my future forever, I would, I think I will just always train no matter what. Yep. Me too. I'm the same way. Love it. Can't, can't get enough of it sometimes to my own fault. So <laughs> yeah, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> um, so John, let's, let's hear from you now. What, how did you, where did you grow up? How was it when you were growing up? How did that lead you into this CrossFit sport that you're in now? Yeah. So, um, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a suitcase. So my parents worked in the airline uh, industry. So I was born in Vancouver, um, was there until about, you know, 
I think I was about six years old and I moved to Calgary. Um, came kind of same with Dave, you know, it was hockey in the winter, um, baseball in the summer, um, and basically one to six, uh, you know, lived in Calgary. Um, started actually to develop uh, exercise-induced asthma um, as a kid. So I started to put on a little bit of weight. Um, asthma was really a, a major issue. I kind of remember always having, you know, different asthma attacks on the bench and things like that kind of grew out of it. Um, I ended up moving from Calgary to Burlington, Ontario. So just outside of uh, Toronto and uh, you know, I was uh, in grade seven and I was always a kind of a shorter, huskier kid, um, super shy and uh, um, you know, was always had, you know, some skill um, in hockey. And I asked my dad one day, and I was just like, you know, why can't I make rep? Why can't I move up? And uh, he was just like, you don't work hard enough. And for whatever reason, you know, my dad was very supportive, but he never like pushed me to the end where it's like, if I wanted to do it, I, I had to want it. Um, so he just gave me that little piece of advice and for whatever reason that stuck. And so from then on, I, uh, I was always wanted to be the hardest worker in the room, even if I wasn't the most skilled. Um, and into my CrossFit days, it's probably a little bit of a fault of mine as well. Um, but uh yeah, so when that hit, um, you know, I hit a nice little growth spurt. Um, I made the next cuts for for my rep team, and I actually went to tryouts. Um, and so I trained all that summer. I was just running, doing push-ups, horrible air squats, and uh, whatever else I could figure out. Probably dips on the coffee table or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so I figured that out. I lost a ton of weight. I grew, you know, seven inches or whatever it was over the summer. Um, and I actually went to, to camp, and the coach was like, it's a private, you know, you have to be invited, you know, uh, you can't just come on the ice and i was like i wasn't invited like i'm john he's like what and he was just like uh oh, okay yeah yeah you can go on and talk to my dad he's like it doesn't even look like the same kid and so basically i got kind of took off um i uh i ended up shutting baseball down um and playing rep uh, and then i ended up playing junior in uh, uh the ojhl in ontario uh, bchl in uh, uh prince george and that's kind of where i where i stuck um ended up after hockey but yeah then went back to the oj and Played a year of Division Three hockey there, where I kind of uh, kind of lost my way a bit. Uh, wasn't happy with the hockey. Wanted to indulge in the sick beauty lifestyle a little bit more than I wanted to to focus on my extracurriculars and and stuff like that. So, uh, um, you know, came back, shut her down that year. Came back to Prince George, and was just you know looked in the mirror one day, and I was getting fat, and I was partying a lot, and uh, I saw Froning on. TSN four, whatever it was, you know, doing a bunch of stuff, <laughs> just jacked as ever. And, uh, I was like, you know what, that's something, that's something I could do. Right. Um, I'd done power cleans and off season training one time. And so, uh, <laughs> and so I was like, you know what, I'll just get my level one next week. I looked at online, booked my flights because my parents worked for the airline. So I paid like 50 bucks and went to Calgary. Um, Jason McDonald was my level one, uh, you know, instructor. So I got my level one, had a cut, cut off shirt with division three Newman Knights on it, got embarrassed in Fran and, uh, fell in love with, uh, with CrossFit, like right away, found a gym in Prince George. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I kind of, I, I, yeah, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the grind. I fell in love with how it felt. Um, I did everything possibly wrong you could do starting out in CrossFit. You know, I kept my face off. I, uh, I didn't learn how to step and spy. Um, you know, everything you can do that's that's not correct, I did, which I think in some respect, you know, helped me out because you know my spine can be like, you know, an S shape and that's I'm that's when you know I'm hitting my stride. So uh, <laughs> I took my I took my spine, my my big heart um to uh, six different regionals as an individual. Um, my self-proclaimed claim to fame is I, I have the world record for Linda um, at the 2000, was it eight, seven, the last regional. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so uh, been to the regional six times. I, I think I was the first guy in like 2000, Mitch reminds me, guy, you know, our buddy all the time. In 2015, I think I was the first guy to win my region in the open and not make the games. So, but I really had to do strict handstand pushups. I didn't know that was a thing. So, uh. Uh, I still barely don't, but that's a long story. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so then, you know, it's, I've just, I've, I've done everything wrong so that I think later in my career, I can do everything right, you know, connect with the right guys, um, 
you know, I've had, you know, a few different coaches that have really helped me out. You know, I was connected with, you know, you know, Mike Fitzgerald and a lot of these guys I've met Dave and Mitch and, um, you know, been, you know, good friends with, you know, Fikowski and, uh, you know, had some, some real good influential people within the sport of CrossFit to, to pave the right direction, um, into where I kind of now, um, took the year off last year, you know, nursing some old injuries, um, that probably stemmed from year one doing hero workouts seven days, you know, out of the week, um, and, uh, not taking a rest day for, you know, I, I don't even know how long. Um, but, uh, you know, body's feeling good and I'm back at it doing the qualifiers this, uh, you know, this round and sitting in some, some good spots. So, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of my long winded story about, you know, how I got here. Cool. <laughs> that's good stuff. And th- there was something that you mentioned about being the hardest worker in the room that I'd like to dig into a little bit, just cause I think it's really interesting. Um, it probably has taken you to where you are and I'd love to hear about number one, how do you think that that has been an advantage and a disadvantage for you? And then number two, I feel like there's a lot of people that are in, let's say, the world right now that don't know how or have trouble with working hard or trying to be the hardest worker in the room. So if you, know, t- if you could tackle the first one and then maybe if you have any thoughts on the second one, um, like why that is, that would be cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, as, as an advantage, uh, you know, it always you know, after kind of that, that turning point in my life when I was, you know, 14, um, at least in my athletic career, um, you know, it's, it's definitely allowed me to out, um, work my skill level. I think, um, you know, I wasn't always the most skilled, you know, hockey player. Um, I had skill, but you know, I'm not the most skilled CrossFitter. Um, but you know, being able to work hard has allowed me to, you know, um, really, I, I think it's the, the, the sole reason why I've kind of accomplished what I've accomplished. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's allowed me to be able to push through certain workouts, like the really tough ones. Like I like that feeling. I like waking up every morning and going to the gym. Cause I want to work hard. I, this is something I'm super passionate about. Um, and I think maybe it's the, the being the hardest worker in the room has allowed me to develop a good passion for working hard as well. Like just doing it over and over and over again. Um, so now I, it's just something I do, uh, as a disadvantage, you know, slowing down was, is always the toughest thing. Um, not listening to my body, um, you know, I'm begged, but I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter. You got to get to work. Um, and that's probably led to a few injuries and, uh, a few, uh, competitions where I wasn't prepared, where I was overtrained. Um, and that's where I want to transition from being the hardest worker in the room to the hardest worker and the smartest, right. You know, taking the, you know, the scientific approach into it, or even just taking the, you know, like, okay, like I wake up and, you know, I'm absolutely begged. Like maybe I have to adjust my training for that day. Maybe I have to take an extra rest day. Maybe I have to look back and make sure I slept correctly and did all those little things because working hard isn't enough. The sport's too big now. Um, people are too good. Um, people are too smart. And, uh, I think it's a big portion of it because I think you can have all the skill and all the scientific background and everything in the world, but if you don't work hard, like you're not going to go anywhere. Right. Um, and so for your second question, for people that have a tough time working hard, you know, it's, it's tough. It's internal. Um, I, I think if you find something you're really passionate about it, working hard is very easy. Um, like I don't work hard in everything I do. Like there's like certain things my wife could tell you that I could work harder at that. I just <laughs> don't like, don't even comprehend. Right. Um, and so, you know, being able to, um, apply that work ethic to something you love, I think is really important because if, if you don't love it, you're not going to work hard. And so if you look back and you're like, I want to make the games, but you're not willing to work hard. Do you really want to, right? Like, is it something you're actually super passionate about? Then you just got to look in the mirror and and have an honest conversation with yourself at that point. Right. Absolutely. Do you have any kind of system for working with athletes and trying to figure out like where their passion lies? I'm having conversations you know, consistently with them, you know, when we first do, you know, our initial consults, you know, you sit down, you listen to them, you ask them, you know, questions about, um, you know, what their overall goal is, what, uh, you know, how does that look on day to day? Um, does it, does it, or what they're doing align with what their, what they've told you their goal actually is. And then reconnecting with them as, as much as possible. You know, if you see in the comments, somebody's like, yeah, you know, just couldn't get up today 
didn't get my workout in, you know, try again tomorrow. And it's like, okay, great. But if you see those starting to be consistent and it's like, okay, well, you know, the volume's good. Your body's feeling good. Is it a mental thing? Do you really want to, you know, are, are, are we aligned here? Are your goals aligned? Do they need to change? So I think having constant communication with your athletes is imperative. If you don't, you let that slip, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just a downward spiral. Yeah, for sure. And before we jump into what you guys are doing with only training, what are your competitive aspirations right now? Oh, for me, um, make the CrossFit games. That's, that's always been my goal. Um, I think during my year off, uh, I was for, for a few moments, I was probably content with just getting my body healthy and, uh, um, maybe not making it and kind of shutting it down, looking back on my accomplishments. And then, you know, I woke up or, you know, opened my eyes one day and I saw a YouTube video and I saw whatever, or I looked in the mirror and I was just like, no, I, my, my goal is to make the games. And, um, I still feel like I have something left in the tank. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to just send it until I can't anymore and, you know, live with the consequences after, um, I'm going to do it a lot smarter, surrounded with the right people. So, um, you know, I feel good. I feel like my body's ready to handle that type of stuff. Um, and you know what, if I, if I leave it all out there and it doesn't happen, I can be content with that. Um, because like, you know, you and Dave are saying, like, I love, I love the training. I love the grind. Um, it's something I wake up and I'm more passionate about than ever. So I don't think that'll ever leave, but I'll, I would obviously be pretty upset if I didn't make the games. Uh, so, uh, I'll just do that instead. Cool. Love it. So you guys have this, <laughs> you guys have this, uh, really cool training platform called only training. I'd love to hear about what it is. Number one, from your guys's mouths. And then like, how did it come? Up? And either of you can tackle that. Um, I'll start. Uh, so only training is a, I mean, we have, so we have one-on-one uh, clients, myself, John, we actually have a new coach who, um, we can officially, uh, announce Emily, Emily Tanner, her name is, um, if you don't know who she is, she's from Texas. Um, she's a gym, uh, gymnastics specialist. Um, she runs multiple, you know, high performance muscle up programs, hand sample up programs. She's been in the games on a team. Uh, I don't remember what year, but very, very high level athlete and coach as well. So we actually, uh, just kind of like sorted out the details before this call so we could actually uh, make that announcement which we're super excited about um so between the three of us and mitch uh mitch, mitch barnard obviously we've got you know our one-on-one -on -one clients um and then we decided that we were going to create a training blog um so i know a lot of people have an issue with this idea or whatever of you know like well, general training doesn't really work for everyone. Um, but here's our take on this is, first of all, um, we all work together to create this. So we're kind of, um, our, our idea is that we were going to all bring our own specialties to the table here and try and create a blog that kind of offers um, a service to people that isn't out there. Um, and by that, I mean, um, well, I can explain exactly what it is. John, John will lay it out. John will write the CrossFit pieces for the most part. I'll write uh, a lot of the strength and weightlifting pieces um, that blend in. And Emily will eventually, when she gets fully involved, will start writing the gymnastic stuff, the more technical stuff, right? Um, but all within John's skeleton. So it's not just like, oh, take this squat program, plug and play, and then take this. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's going to be us three creating it together. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the first thing. And then... The second thing is that we really wanted to create something um, to teach people uh, to slow down in the sport of CrossFit, if that makes sense. I'd, yeah, um, I'd love for you to elaborate on that. Yeah. Well, it's, we, 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 I mean, me and John talk about this all the time. It's basically a sport that promotes overtraining. Um, it's not done properly. Um, it's a lot easier to control that obviously in a one-on-one -on -one environment when you just, you know, you give the person exactly what they need to do. Whereas like a general blog typically is like, you know, hit this Metcon, do this strength piece, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, maybe there are some better ones out there than others, but what we were trying to like, our thoughts were, we fully understand that not, not everyone out there can afford one-on-one -on -one individual coaching. Right. Sure. So we're going to try and create, um, 
the best product that we can to reach as many people as we can to try and get people working uh, at different intensities throughout the week and realize that you can't be, you know, literally ramming your head into the wall going 110% every single day in, you know, five rounds per time, 12 minute AMRAP, 20 minute AMRAP, whatever you like, you've got to find different gears in your training. Um, A, to uh, allow you to have some longevity in the sport but also i mean like to (laughs) to create uh, a better aerobic base for yourself right like i mean yourself i mean i'm sure you obviously can attest to this if you were if you did iron man training a lot of your training would have been at very very low intensities right and um you know that's like the basis of endurance training is done at low intensities or, you know, a small percentage at very high intensities. Um, I think we can all agree that CrossFit is an endurance sport. So it, it's got to be treated as such, even though there's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit more to it than that. I mean, obviously Ironman and CrossFit are different, but there's a lot of carryover principles, I think, that are missed in training for CrossFit um, by a lot of people where they just think that, well, I just got to be going as hard as I can all the time. And that's how I'm going to get fitter. Right. Um, and the other piece is that I see often is people thinking that that cyclical work just automatically means low intensity work. It might be low impact work for the most part, but just because you're on a row and a rower or on a bicycle, um, that doesn't mean you're doing low intensity work. Right. So, um, we're trying to educate people on training in different heart rate zones. Um, to, I mean, A, to slow them down, B, promote recovery, and C, to um, help them last longer in their CrossFit lives. Um, I mean, and just get fitter overall uh, in general. So that's, that's, that's kind of what we're doing. That's super cool. Um, can you elaborate on how you tackle the different heart rate zones? Um, sure. John, do you want to dive into this one? Or do you want me to keep going? Ah, you can just keep going. Yeah, no, I think you're in a roll. Cool. Um, yeah, so just on a, I mean, on a weekly basis, let's say, you know, we'll have even even on the blog. So we'll have in our in our intent of the workout, right? So a we're starting to encourage people to actually uh, get heart rate monitors is the first thing, um, and then you know getting them to try and stay at certain percentages of max aerobic heart rate um, or max training heart rate within a said piece of work. Mm -hmm. So um, I was, I was going to bring something up here and and read one, but I can't find it right now, but you know, like a a 30, 30 to 40 minute uh, training piece, for example, and we'll ask, you know, someone to, to sit at 75, you know, 75, 80% of their max training heart rate, uh, throughout that entire piece of work, which, um, when, when you actually, I'm not going to go into the numbers here, but when you do break that down, it's actually very, very simple work, right? It's, it, it almost feels the, the feedback we always get is like, this is really easy. And it's like, yeah, it, it should, it should be easy, right? It doesn't right. always have to be, um, murdering yourself laying on the floor when it, when it's done. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the part I like about it is like the, the start the stuff that I, you know, introduce again myself and everything. Um, but I think can, can, even if people like don't have heart rate monitors or people are still kind of confused about how, how to attack something like that, that has a, a you know, a gear down effect to it, um, you know, within like a Metcon piece or a mixed modal piece, um, you know, so even some of the workouts will have, you know, I think it's starting to become more of a trend, but like percentages of effort, right? Um, and so if people can get to know what that percentage of effort is for like said eight minute AMRAP and it's like, we want you to go at 85, like, do we have a designation for that specific 85%? Some workouts we will, some workouts we don't. Um, but if you are, you know, start out hot and you burn out and your pace is slowly, slowly going into kind of survival mode, then, you know, of, co- of course that's not sustainable, right? That's not 85%. You went out at a hundred and now you're at, you know, whatever you can hold on to. So, um, I think it's, those pieces are really, I think for, for the CrossFit world are, are easy to connect where it's like, okay, we want you to go at a high rate for the entire said given piece. And we want you to be able to sustain that over that piece. We don't want your paces per round to slow down. Um, we don't want, we actually would rather you increase as you go along. Um, and I think when people apply that into like qualifying workouts or open workouts, 
um, and all of a sudden you see the top athletes and they actually increase their pace as they go along, um, you know, that's something you can kind of like uh, gravitate to where it's like all of a sudden you see people go head to head and it's like, well, they're actually getting faster as they go. It's like, yeah, because they probably trained that way um, where instead of people, yeah, like it's like, oh, I thought it was just always high intensity all the time. Um, you know, that's just a one way ticket to burnout, right? And you never get to really know what gear, how to slow down, how each movement affects your body, um, how you should pace a movement if you blow up on chest of bar pull ups. Well, you know, if you've done workouts under different, you know, efforts and different perceived efforts, you're going to know how that, how your heart rate's going to spike on certain things and you might be able to adjust it at, you know, game day. So I think it's really interesting what you're saying there and it's super smart as far as like different training goes and having had the experience with endurance myself and then getting into not only like things like bodybuilding, but then CrossFit and the idea that everybody is going really hard all the time. And then actually having the experience of burning out myself, I, I, I've wondered about this. And my question for you is that not only do you think that this is smart, obviously for a competitive athlete, but what about like in your everyday gym goer? I mean, I go into these CrossFit gyms and as I'm traveling right now, I go to a lot of different CrossFit gyms and it's always hard all the time. Um, yeah. You know, so I would love for your thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll touch on this one for sure because I, you know, I've coached in a, uh, in a gym for several years and one thing like you'll see it all the time where people come in like me and me and John both alluded to this. We started CrossFit you know, the first workout you ever do, you're lying on your back, you're thinking, wow, this is, this is unreal, right? Like, this is amazing. Um, that happens to everyone. And then, you know, you know, you're new to it. It's great. You make these gains. And then the next thing you know, like, I mean, fast forward, you're moody, you're like, you know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, you're, you're not like digging the people in your class. It's like, and you don't know what's going on. Next thing you know, like you're injured, you hate CrossFit, you quit CrossFit, you're done. Right. And it's like, if the training was just written a little, a little smarter, that a lot of those things wouldn't happen. Right. And so that's like, when we talk about the blog, it's like, well, it might not be ideal to like tackle someone's weaknesses. It, we can reach more people that way. Right. Like it's just, that's just the way it is. It's like, you know, if whatever, like however many one-on-ones we get, we're always going to have more people just following along and doing what they do. And if we can kind of like get that message out there, um, I think it's going to help a lot of people. And like, and so we're, we're starting to get into uh, programming for gyms as well. So we're hoping to uh, help solve that problem. Cause I definitely agree, you know, literally seven days a week, it was basically, uh, you know, back squat, 15 minute Metcon. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Deadlift, 12 minute Metcon. Yeah. Strict press, 20 minute Metcon, you know, like, and just, and not like, Oh, do it at 50% and like, let's cruise here. It's like, no, like it gets tough. And especially in, you know, egos start flying, right. You're at, in a CrossFit gym, even if it's, even if the coach is, is doing a good job and being like, okay, like, like the idea here is just to move and breathe. Like you're always going to get those people just sending it. Right. And being like, I want my name on the top of that leaderboard, no matter what, like, <laughs> even though it's like, yeah, we'll work at like a, you know, four to five RPE today. And you know, guys are like winning by 20 rounds. It's like, well, that probably wasn't the intent of the workout. Right. But you're absolutely <laughs> right. I think, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think there's a lot of good things about training in a group setting, but that is, that is the number one downfall in my, in my opinion anyways. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree with you having gone through and seen all that I've seen. So I think it, it's really interesting and I haven't actually talked with a lot of people that are approaching it. Like you guys are I've seen some little tidbits here and there, but not actually from a, a generalized blog standpoint. Obviously if you're dealing with an individual athlete, it becomes easier to do that, but um, yeah, it's very, totally. very cool. Who do you think um, your ideal client is? ideal i mean i think i think right now our our ideal clients that we like for one-on-ones we seem to be getting uh people that are already competing um looking to go to like whatever that next step is i would guess um we've got a couple like i i've, I've got a couple weightlifters as well which is completely irrelevant to what we're doing like different different uh different stream altogether but like 
I would say we have a handful of elite CrossFitters. Then we've got a, you know, a whole bunch of people that are competitive with it, want to get better. Um, as far as beginners go, I don't think we have a lot of beginners. We probably have a few, um, which is, which is totally fine. And like, I'm actually super stoked when, when someone who is newer, um, comes to us because I feel like if we can get these principles across to them very early on in their CrossFit life, they're going to have a much better chance to succeed than if their first experience is 12 months straight in some kind of environment where it's just like, like I said, just, just pound away, right? Like just go crazy every single day of the week. And it's like, it's man, it's, it is tough to get people to slow down. I like, you know, like in, unless they, uh, are educated on endurance um, training or whatever it might be. It's like, they just, it's so hard for some people to wrap their head around, like going slower is actually going to get me fitter here than going faster for this like 40 minute time frame. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. yeah I, I still remember to this day, my Ironman coach saying like, all right, we're going to have you sit at 130 beats per minute. And we're just going to yeah. do that over and over again. And eventually you're going to move faster at 130 beats per minute. And I'm like, huh. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to, can I interrupt there for one second? Yeah. So one, one, one of my buddies who I coach, I got him, uh, I had him running a 5k on the air runner at exactly 150 beats per minute. Right. And he's like, okay, well, whatever. He's like, that was really easy. Like it was just whatever. I was like, okay, well, good. Like he's a fit guy. He does triathlons and like, and he's a, you know, regional level athlete. So he's not unfit. And then about three weeks later, I had him do the same thing. And he was like, he was like three minutes faster at the same heart rate. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And he, so that to him became the like, oh, okay. Like if I can do more work, more work in, or the same work in less time at the same heart rate, He's like, that's get it. That's fitness. Right? right. And like, as soon as like, as soon as that light bulb goes on for people, then, then they're bought in. Right. So I tried it with my one-on-ones, but I try to get them like the people I can ideally get them a heart rate monitor um, earlier on. And then I'll put them on some kind of a test and I'll just say like, you know, hold X beats per minute for 30 minutes. Just tell me how many calories you accumulate. And then we'll, we'll just train for a month or two months or whatever it is. I'll put them to the same test and I'll just say, do it again, exact same beats per minute. And without fail, when they see that they've, you know, at the same heart rate produce more calories because they can hold a higher pace on an assault bike at the same heart rate that they previous had, then, then it starts to click that they're getting much, much fitter by going slow. That's very yeah, very interesting. For those of you that are listening, you should be like writing this down, taking notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you um, account for, let's say, a Metcon that has a heavier piece in it when you're when we're talking on this subject? Um, so, like, if um, like if you if you want to slow it down, yeah. So, yeah, like I guess uh, I guess it would it, it would really depend on on the individual and uh, depend on the workout. But uh, let's say you know we do give you you know a heavy piece um, that has uh, you know a, a squat clean at like you know two hundred five, and that's really heavy for you. And um, you know I would just I, I would probably say like just basically slowing it down. Like as a coach, you would probably select a weight that you know the athlete can to, can do. Um, you know, with, without basically blowing up, without elevating their heart rate too high so they can keep that sustainable. But as, as a general blog, um, the cool thing is we also write intense um, under our workouts as well. So like if we have a piece that we're like, we want to go at 85%, but it has a squat clean at 185 and someone looks at it and they're like, oh, that's just going to murder me. There's no chance I'm going to be able to go at 85%. I'm just going to blow up. Well, in the intent piece, we have it written where it's like, okay, you know, select a load that you can complete at, maybe we'll give you a percentage, maybe we'll say select a load that you can hit, you know, singles every 10 seconds and your heart rate stays relatively, you know, low, for example. Um, but that's a big, because that's a big thing within our sport. You know, you hit a piece, if it's, you know, complex gymnastics, it's, it's a heavy load. Um, and all of a sudden you get to it and then you start, you know, rallying them off, you get off and then all of a sudden your workout's done. Like you can't breathe. You're struggling to get back on the rower and, 
Um, and those pieces are really important to, to understand how to pace because you might be able to do that in a competition um, with, you know, speed up on the other stuff, um, but be able to slow yourself down on that piece so that you can go faster anywhere else. Maybe that's just your weakness. That could be with ring muscle ups as well, right? You know, super complex. Um, you know, some people just get hit hard and their heart rate starts to elevate. Um, you know, that could be technical, but that could also just be, you know, if, if you're a taller person like myself and, um, you know, you weigh a bit more and it just takes more out of you to do, well, you have to, you have to be able to pace those things out. And so it is important to put those in those pieces. Maybe you just don't load it up at 90% of their one rep max squat clean, or, you know, if their max ring muscle ups are 10, you don't have eight in there, right? You know, maybe you, as, as a, as a blogger, as a coach, we, we will hopefully be able to, to structure it at, at a, a number that they can keep, um, or in our 10 pieces, be like, if it is eight ring muscle ups, you know, if you know, your max number is 12, then make sure you break these up into twos, you know, with a 15 second rest in between, but being able to understand that stuff is huge. Yeah, absolutely. How long do the pieces usually take for the whole day? I'm sorry, uh, not the pieces, but the whole training day for an athlete. For, uh, well, for the, for the blog, we try to keep it like probably max about like an hour and a half. Um, and then we do have some, like for the pay blog, we have uh, extra credit work. Um, some people can put them into two different sessions. Um, we are adding a second session where, you know, we'll add some cyclical pieces, maybe some running, track running, swimming, stuff like that. Um, so generally the workout will be about like that hour and a half range. Um, the, honestly, the biggest reason for that is you, like, you don't need three hours in the gym. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, but like, you know, if it's, you know, 90 minutes, you know, uh, or, you know, that's one, not enough, or I'm going to have to add a, a second piece to my day. Um, like not, more isn't always better, right? If you can, you know, be really dialed in with what you're doing. Um, the program's constructed correctly. You get in, you get your work done, you recover. Um, and that's why we add those extra pieces for probably the more elite athlete who, you know, can add, you know, uh, you know, uh, extra work in. Um, but, you know, for even for experienced athletes, like we've accumulated so much work. Um, like I don't do two a days, five days a week. Um, I've accumulated a lot of capacity. If anything, my capacity is my strength. So I need to get stronger. So the last thing I need to do is have two a days. That's actually going to break down my body and I'm going to get weaker, right? right. Hard, hard mentally for me to do, even though I preach it, it's very hard. I, I get it. I you want to throw down, but, um, yeah, you, you know, more is not always better. Um, I think the, the intent of it is, is really the importance. So cool. And can you break down the blog for me? So is it free paid blog and then individual programming? Is that how you guys have it set up? Yeah, so uh, our, our free blog is basically a very bare bones shell of the paid blog, right? So the paid blog, um, you know, you're going to get all like all of that intent, which is kind of really the important stuff, right? Because like, if, for example, if, if you have a 30 minute AMRAP, and all you see is the movements, um, people are going to be going to be sending it on that 30 minutes, you know what I mean? Whereas you might read you might read John's stuff and it's like, you know, I want you moving here between like 150, 160 beats yeah. per minute for the entire 30 minutes. And it's like, you don't have that. So like, I mean, that's where all the, the, the value is in there. Um, specific warm ups for the day are in there. Like, like John said, optional second sessions, um, which are for the most part, more slow stuff and, and not, not always like super slow stuff. But, uh, my, my, my reasoning behind wanting to do that was because, uh, almost every person I've ever seen, like from my experience in uh, coaching in a gym and elsewhere is like, Oh, I, I need, I need more volume. I need more volume. You know what I mean? I always hear that, but like uh, almost never would I ever hear someone being like, I need more volume, but I need that volume to be low intensity. Like I've yeah. never, I don't, I don't generally hear that. Right. It's just like, I just want more of like that. It's like, right. that's the opposite, the opposite of what you need, you yeah. know? So like, the, the extra pieces that you get on the paid blog, like I said, majority of them are slow with some, with some anaer anaerobic sprint stuff as well. Um, because I mean, it's obviously a big part of the sport too. Right. But yeah, the majority of the extra stuff is, is more slow stuff just because I mean, like I, I feel like, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel, but the trend in CrossFit, I feel like endurance now is more important than ever in the sport. Um, yeah it's skewed a little bit because you, you could look at it and be like, wow, what do, what do you mean? Like everyone is snatching, you know, 275 on the male side, you know, girls are snatched 200. It's like, 
yeah, everyone is, but like, I feel like the one rep max has become less and less important, you know, over the year, last few years in the open, uh, more like CP battery work becomes important. Yeah. Like just re repeated efforts at a high percentage seems to be more important and like having adequate strength versus having like, you know, a super, super heavy one rep max back squat, you know, and, and all this stuff just doesn't seem as important. Whereas if you are incredibly enduring, um, I mean, also it's just going to make those repeated efforts that much easier. Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. And I, I feel like to kind of put a side note on paid programming versus free programming, anybody that's listening and wants to get better at any kind of sport, they should always be looking for somebody that is doing paid programming because as a programmer, you're going to put more effort into the athletes if you're getting paid for it, number one. And cool. as somebody that is doing the program, you're going to put more effort into something that you're paying for. So, you know, I, I, I well, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah it, it keeps you accountable, right? Like yep. you're like, well, I'm, I'm paying for this, so I should probably do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What, what's your guys' feedback loop for, I guess, any of the programs? Meaning that like if, if I'm doing your program and I'm like, we kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but if I'm feeling blown up or, or whatever, do you have a way of looking for that and you know, expecting people to post on the blog all the time or like giving their feedback as far as like where they are as far as recovery or something like that? Yeah, so we have um, through um, uh, SugarWad, we have a comment section. Um, where people are, you know, able to write down, um, you know, you know, how the workout went. So like, especially for like those, um, those slower pieces, it's really interesting to see the comments and the results and what people actually write and how they attack the workout. Um, because you're, you are able to tell it's like, okay, so if we see a lot of people that are like, and we want, you know, an easy effort date, you know, 50% effort or, you know, at a certain heart rate, and everyone's saying that they're blowing up and they're like, oh man, I was just mangled today. And it's just like, oh, okay, well, this has given us a good idea. People maybe aren't clicking with this. So we'll go in, comment, be like, hey, you know, maybe bring this down, um, you know, uh, look at your intensity throughout the week. And we'll be able to have feedback with people on the blog about that as well. Um, with individuals, it's, it's really easy. You're commu constantly communicating with them. Um, but I think it's important for us to look at the blog and see where the trends are within those pieces. Um, also we can look in, in, on the intense ones, you know, when we give people, you know, intense sport, um, you know, aerobic piece and, you know, people are just like, oh, you know, my shoulders, you know, are, are blew up from the rest of the stuff. It's like, okay, well, it's good for us to look back on the programming. It's like, okay, for the, for the blog, are we, you know, getting too biased on something, you know, are we, you know, creating our own limitations within the program and we're getting some feedback. So for us looking at the comments and the results of, of, of uh, the people that are doing the blog is going to be extremely important for us to manage, um, you know, basically manage that, manage the fatigue, manage that our um, our vision of of our uh, programming is getting, um, you know, is is sinking into people, right? It, it's actually sinking, and people aren't just throwing down and sending it twenty four seven, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Do you so ask for that on the program? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, I was just going to mention one thing that we should have brought up is so on the on our paid blog you get access like to our to the the Sugar Wad um, software and so we've basically cre created like an online community so we have like even if you're not a one on one athlete of ours we've got constant like contact with all of these people doing the blog so it's not as if they pay for like the paid blog and they just you know get an email and away they go and we. It's like we we never see them like so we have a we have a, a leaderboard that that goes up you know we see how how they're performing week to week this and that you know people are in there chirping it's it's just like it's it's basically like having your own gym online right so it's, yeah. it's, it's been it's been really cool um, but again it's also like a great a great place for that exact thing is for feedback and for seeing how people are paying attention um, to reading the intents of the workouts right and seeing what's happening and then. You know, if I, if I see someone, you know, with a score that's like 10 rounds higher than everyone else on a, you know, a 60% effort piece, it's like, Hey dude, like, you know, send them a message. Like, just think maybe you missed the intent here a little bit, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and hopefully it, it sinks in, but I mean, we're also, uh, you know, we like, we, like I said, we've seen friends been a part of it ourselves to like victims of burnout or whatever it is. So like, we're also like, 
we're currently in the middle of a deload week right right now right so even on our blog like yeah. we realize that some people might not like that but that's tough you know it's like <laughs> we're not right we're not we're not writing anymore this week this is what it is it's it's going to be an easy week so the next you know four weeks we can hit it hard again and then and then we'll take another week where we're just chilling so um yeah i think it's important for people to realize that like and let their bodies recover just move smooth for a week um you know i think during that week a lot of times people get antsy and then coming out the other end of it they're like oh this is this is cool yeah you know like i actually feel feel like i'm ready to like ready to go for another four weeks again yeah absolutely how do you guys tackle the nutrition side of things Gibby? yeah so for um for our individual clients um for me, again, it starts with that consult, um, you know, sit down with them, see kind of where, where their nutrition is, um, you know, specifically, you know, if it's, if it's macros, if it's just getting a, an idea of what they eat throughout the week. Um, like, again, we're not, we don't right now specifically have a nutrition, um, you know, coach that, that we have that kind of does, you know, our, our, through our blog or anything, but for individual athletes, um, you know, a lot of people, I think, you know, if it's a specific person, um, and you know, finding out like basically what they eat. Cause a lot of people within, I, I would say for me, like a lot of my male athletes, um, making sure that we're managing, um, the amount of protein or managing the amount of fat that they're intaking is something that's really important. Um, you know, I've had a, a couple of guys that come to mind where it's like, okay, what are you eating? And it's like, you know, they weigh 200 pounds and they're having 250 pounds of protein and their fats are at like 120 and their carbs are super high. And it's like, yeah, man, I just feel so lethargic. And it's like, well, yeah, for sure. You know, but I understand that. Like I take kind of just more of like a holistic approach around it. Um, instead of, um, you know, getting the athletes to understand what's going into their body is number one, um, making sure that they have an idea of what's going in. Um, and then how they feel after that is, is really, really important. Um, I don't know if they, Dave might have a little bit of a different approach to it. No, I mean, that's, that's pretty similar. Um, I don't, I don't get too, too specific with it. We're also, we are also in, uh, in the works of bringing on someone, uh, to kind of help with that, to be like, uh, more specific with, with our client's nutrition, um, which again, can't uh, drop any names at this point, but we are working on, uh, getting that piece of the puzzle, uh, solved as well. So we can, um, uh, just kind of like point someone with, uh, in the direction of more of a professional background. Um, and that like, I have a, you know, a general knowledge of it, but not to the point where, um, I feel overly confident with like dialing in every single person's, uh, nutrition based on different lifestyle factors. Right. So, um, yeah. we'll, we'll hopefully get that, get that shored up, uh, as, as soon as possible. Cool. Yeah. It's like the big thing within that, again, you know, if you kind of just take more of that, like, you know, you know, simplified approach to it, making sure that, you know your individual, you know, is digesting food correctly. Are they doing like the little things that, um, allow them to do that? You know, are they chewing their food? Are they sitting down for their meals? Um, you know, are they making sure that they, you know, if you have, you know, you know, fiery diarrhea after you have hot sauce, like, maybe you, don't have hot sauce. <laughs> you know, let's be like, like, or same thing. If you have it after you have a sandwich, well, like, let's take back, maybe, maybe you have some sort of sensitivity to gluten, wheat, whatever. Um, you know, that's a big thing. Like, look, <laughs> Like we can all talk about it, right? We're all grown up. So um, it's a big thing. Are you digesting your food correctly? Are you absorbing all that nutrients? Um, and so like having those lifestyle, uh, you know, pieces really dialed in can, can eliminate a lot of the stuff, um, you know, that people, it's like, well, maybe I should go paleo. Maybe I should go keto. Maybe I should do this. It's like, maybe you should just sit down, chew your food, don't eat like an asshole. And, you know, we'll all figure it out as we go along, right? Um, for athletes, a lot of it's just like, you know, maybe let's introduce a little more food. Let's dial back the training. Let's, you know, there's all those different factors. So fiery diarrhea is the worst though. <laughs> I'm glad that you went with fiery diarrhea. That's, That's that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong if you have fiery diarrhea. Just there's, yeah, <laughs> take a step back and be like, what, what, what did I eat? Oh, fried chicken sandwich from Earl's? Yeah. <laughs> <Don't do that again. laughs> Oh, cool. Well, a perfect transition point here to some, uh, <laughs> some fun questions. Um, I, I, for, uh, but I want to uh, just kind of put in there that I think that it's really cool what you guys are doing. I, th I love the, the thought process behind it. It sounds like you guys have 
um, really tackled some of the things that I feel like have been missing in a lot of training programs, having done shoot out, you know, all kinds of different training programs, some of the bigger name ones. And I think that they're missing some of these key aspects that you're talking about and that I've asked questions about myself. So really cool stuff. Um, but uh, fun question time. What's your favorite right. cheat meal? I'll go pizza. And let's, I like to get into these. What pizza, where is it coming from? What's on okay. it? Okay. It's uh, from my, the hometown, my hometown. It's called back at the ranch. It's like a thin, it's a thin crust, but almost like, uh, you know, like the cracker crust almost. Yep. Yeah. So pepperoni and mushroom, thin crust from back at the ranch in Oak Bank, Manitoba, Canada. <laughs> cool. Subtle plug. <laughs> <laughs> John? Um, mine. Um, frick. You know, it's, uh, I'm a fat kid at heart. So I, I think I have a lot that all blend in together. So like, I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I, I love like high fat, salty foods, like chips, salt and vinegar. I could eat a bag of Lay's with potato chips. Like that's a constant struggle for me not to just like grab those and just dummy the entire thing. Um, there's also these really good, um, like kettle corn ones out of Kelowna that I get in the healthy section. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I will buy, I have to close my eyes when I, when I grab my almond creamer for my coffee, uh, cause the, they just haunt me. Um, I, I love bacon cheeseburgers. Um, you know, my favorite place like Earl's actually, um, you know, a, a restaurant in, uh, in, in, um, in Prince George in, in Canada, uh, has a really good, uh, you know, cause they don't, they don't like, like dry out the, uh, the meat. And so then I just double patty it burger, load up the fries. Ah, it's just incredible. There's a good fry guy actually in the heart of Prince George that has the best fries and they're just like crispy. Like you, uh, they just, yeah, there's so many. I just don't want to go down this road. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we could do like a whole podcast on this whole thing. Yeah. Bags of candy. It just doesn't matter. Everything, everything that's bad for you. Just bring it to me. Oh, cool. Next up, uh, favorite workout or, or movement? John, you go. I, uh, my favorite movement of all time is wall balls. Like it's it, they're well for me, it's simple, no skill. You can, they, they're, they can always be devastating. Um, my favorite workout, um, because of that, I would say would be like any variation of Karen like sneaky Karens, you know, 30 pound wall ball Karens, the Wadapalooza workout with toast to bar Karen that just came out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's any variation that you just throw 150 wall balls at me. And I'm just like, yes, no skill. <laughs> just no skill. Gill over here. Just all grind, all heart. Love it. How are you going to split that up? We've been talking about it a little bit. My first reaction was like 150 and then survive. But then I was like, yeah, let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking of start, you know, start a post to bar, you know, 15 and 30, but like, you know, we've seen a lot of people going like smaller increments, maybe higher turnover. So I'll play around with it a little bit, but yeah. Ah, oh, the old me just wants 150 just to send it. <laughs> <laughs> on the toast of art. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I would say, I mean, favorite movement um, in CrossFit, I'd say uh, strict handstand push ups for myself. Um, I, I guess I'm a little bit biased to the snatch as well. Although, oddly enough, my barbell cycling is like pretty terrible, just as far as like um, cycling high reps, even snatch or clean and jerk, even though it's kind of one reps are fine. Um, yeah, handstand push-ups. Well, any any variation of handstand push-ups, really. Favorite workout? Um, heavy Isabel, I guess. All right. One, yeah. I did, a, I did a really fun one, actually. Michael Fitzgerald created it um, at a training camp a couple of years ago. It was, uh, what did we do? Strict muscle-ups with ascending weights in the snatch. So it was nine, seven, five strict muscle up 185, 205, 225 snatch. That was, that's a cool workout. All right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Um, favorite book podcast or piece of learning material, or it could be multiple, just whatever comes to mind is you're like, man, this was this is good stuff. 
Gibby? Uh, favorite podcast, not for learning, um, is, is definitely spit and chiclets. Um, it's on, uh, it's on Barstool. It's, uh, uh, Ryan Whitney and, um, uh, a couple of former, uh, NHLers. Um, and they just, you get the inside story about how hockey players live and that little sick beauty in me just eats it all up, buy all the shirts, listen to it. It's just fantastic. Um, you don't learn much from it. Um, it's a good entertainment, uh, during my, my long walks, uh, that I like to take. Um, but, uh, books, um, you know, I've, I've, I've actually started a, a few different, um, ones. Um, you know, I, I do like the, um, uh, Jordan Peterson. I think he's got some really, really cool, um, ways to think about living and how to handle yourself and things that have, you know, really applied to me, you know, um, for example, you know, like making your bed, you know, it's not as simple as making your bed. It's making sure that everything's, you know, uh, you know, aligned in your life and, you know, um, you know, Jocko Willick's book, you know, uh, making sure that you're accountable to everything you do. Um, I think that like some, some pretty general pe- like spe- um, um, pieces of, of, of um, that, that can help everybody, you know, you're accountable to everything. So if like your relationships aren't going well, stop blaming others, like hold yourself accountable. And, you know, you can, you, you I think that can be really uh, uplifting and really, uh, you know, uh, you know, it can, it can change your people's lives. It's like all of a sudden, like everything in your life you control. And, um, you know, obviously there might be some things you, you can't, but you can control how you react to them. And so I, I really like, uh, I really enjoy those. And I'm always up for more podcasts. You know, I listen to, you know, the classics, you know, Joe Rogan and things like that. When we get certain guys on uh, body of knowledge with uh, Andy Galpin is, is awesome. Um, uh, but yeah. Good stuff. John. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Um, Dave. Self, um, yeah. Um, you can't hurt me. The David Goggins book I thought was really cool. I like um, that too. Have you guys read that? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, pretty mind blowing stuff. Uh, he's a very, very interesting individual. Um, my buddy Mitch is on uh, Beyond Training from uh, Ben Greenfield. Oh, um, Ben's a smart. You guys dude. heard that one? Uh, yeah, been super smart. It's just, uh, you know, endurance, health, recovery. Um, he's got a lot of cool practical things that, uh, you can implement into your daily routine, um, that are, that are pretty simple to do as well. And then just even like some of his practices, um, talking about training, very, very interesting. Um, I do actually really appreciate the quality as well as a lot of the catalyst athletics, uh, weightlifting, uh, videos that they put, put out like a little education, little educational video. Uh Oh, the Davey cut out there losing Dave. Oh man. Uh, Oh, oh, there we go. (laughs) Yeah. Am I back? Yeah. Yeah. I heard oh, Catalyst okay. Athletic videos. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, yeah, that their their training videos are all really cool. Um, yeah, those three come to mind. Uh, I, I've got a whole pile of books I've got to get through right now. I've got the book Endure um, sitting on my shelf right now that I haven't. Well, I literally read one chapter and then haven't got back to it yet. So um, yeah, I've got I've got a lot of work to do. But those those three come to mind. Yeah, but actually. Sorry, Actually, podcast. Uh, um, I mean, I listen. I've listened to like you know a lot of the Mind Muscle Project stuff because they've they've got a lot of cool guests on there. Um, I do enjoy Joe Rogan's podcast, um, but I, I would say I'm not like, yeah, I don't like frequently put them on to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I've listened to a few of yours, Joe. Um, so listen to the one with uh, James Fitzgerald and a couple others as well. So, yeah, that's about it. Cool. What were you going to say, John? Oh, I just uh, I I just read a book um, from Malcolm Gladwell, uh, uh, David and Goliath, and uh, you know I really um, I just yeah that was just one I was actually be pissed if I didn't mention. I, I I really really enjoyed it and just a different take on the underdog, right? And um, how you know the underdog, you know maybe isn't, you know, 
you know, maybe isn't the underdog in certain situations or because of their, what's happened to them, they've uh, had the ability to adapt and actually be, you know, have a strength in their limitation. You know, I, I, I loved that book. I thought that was awesome. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Good stuff. I'll put all these things in the show notes too. So if anybody would like to get links to all of these great training tools and materials, you can go to the get better project.com slash 23. If you want to just link right to those uh, last question here, what do you guys think of the direction of CrossFit? Gibby, yeah. go for it. We've uh, Dave and I have actually talked a lot about this. Um, you know, when, when, it, when it all first happened, um, I was probably like one of like everybody else just hit panic mode and it was like, you know, you know, CrossFit's done, it's, it's imploding and, uh, you know, we all should go find a different sport. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, you know, sat back and, you know, I think, you know, with the, the added sanctionals, um, one, it's, it's more opportunity for athletes to go out and, uh, compete in the sport that we love, um, instead of, you know, 10 regionals or whatever it was, we got 34 sanctionals this year with, you know, multiple qualifiers, a lot of feeder uh, competitions, local competitions that may lead into something. So like there's more opportunity for athletes to express the sport we love. And I think, you know, the idea of it growing is, I, I, I think that's just inevitable. I think, you know, it's going to have more reach, which is really, really cool. Um, you know, as a, as a HQ with what's happening there, I just don't know. I don't know enough about it. Um, you know, it, I, I, I always don't think like getting rid of Facebook and Instagram is always a good idea to help grow, seeing how they're just such great platforms to use. Yeah. Um, so I would always love for them to come back. Um, I also loved all the media. I know they, they're trying to get away from being a media company, but I always love the videos that they've done, but I think it can, it can, you know, it can lead to other people like, you know, the buttery bros um, to, to produce those content pieces and maybe, you know, have their own take on it, and that can be really interesting and really cool so i do like the way that that's going and i think the community of crossfit is starting to take over um and i think maybe that was their intent the whole time is let everybody else you know promote the sport and promote that and hq will just kind of do what they do um so i think that is cool i think the reach is gonna is gonna uh um is, is gonna be good i think it's gonna start to to reach more um that way uh the games itself you know there's there's definitely some kinks that probably need to be worked out uh you know, with the cuts and stuff like that. And, um, I think just because it's so new, I think they could have handled it probably a little bit different. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a new process and we'll, I think it is going to be a learning curve. We're still a very new sport now, even newer, if you really think about it. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see, but I think it's, I think there's a ton of upside, um, within the sport, um, and CrossFit itself, you know? Yeah, I agree. And yeah. What do you think, Dave? Uh, I'm on the same page for the most part. I, I like, although I, I, I'll be the first to admit, I really miss regionals just because, yeah. That's you know, you know, regionals weekend was just like the coolest thing to me. Like I, I, I was always more of a fan of regionals weekend than I was the games to be totally honest. Um, I don't really know why, I guess, I guess when, I guess going into a regional, like a lot of people had really, really high hopes, right? Like, at every regional like the goal was get to the games and then when you get to the games truthfully like 10 guys had a shot you know what i mean whereas everyone else is just like happy to be there sort of thing so like yeah. regionals weekend was was really cool so i do miss that i will i'll definitely admit that um uh, but at the same time like these sanctional event uh some of these sanctioned events um have proven to be really really cool and i think they're only going to get better um as people start to like iron their their own kinks out right so um some of them had great media coverage this year some of them didn't have any some of them had poor um i think that will start to get better and better as we go which i'm super excited for um get the athletes some more exposure um the games like john said um yeah it was it's i'm fine with the idea of cuts uh not not super stoked on just having 10 left um for like two full days basically um yeah. what didn't think that was great but at the same time it was like it is what it is that's just what they did um um you can you, you can argue back and forth all you want like you know change the order of the events it changes who's there of course that's like that's no brainer but um i just think that like crossfit's always been like at the end of a lot of things the cream will always rise right so like it's the one 
issue I suppose I have with the cuts is that, you know, you're not really allowing that to happen if um, people are getting chopped halfway, right? Like there's been, there's been years, I'm sure there's, if you, I don't know the stats on this, but I would bet that there would have been someone outside of the top 10 um, after Friday to come back and win the CrossFit games. I, I can't say that that's a fact, but I would imagine that that's probably the case. Right. Um, so maybe you're potentially missing your champion that way. Like, I, you know, um, like the year that rich, that rich was walking in the triple three, like where he couldn't have been high on the leaderboard. Right. And then on Sunday, he just went mental and won everything and still won. But, right. you know, you have cuts that year. You just cut rich Froning after Friday and you know <laughs> what I mean? That like, that, yeah, like, yeah. Oops. Yeah. It's like, so, I mean, but it is what it is. I just think like 20, maybe 20 is a good number to cut to and run yeah. with it. Like two, two heats of 10. Um, for the weekend, I think is fine. But I mean, that's just my opinion. It doesn't really matter. It's like, they're going to do what they're going to do. Um, inevitably you're going to get the mats and the Tia's of the world <laughs> that are going to win regardless yeah. of what you do. So, um, it's just for the everyone else really, I guess, but it is what it is. But I, I overall, the changes to the sport, I think are great. Like, honestly, I do. I think the sport's going to just explode, um, with all these sanctions. And this is going to be the first year that people, know what's going on for the most part so i'm excited for that there's a lot of like you know people are starting this season last year and like not even having a clue like what sanctionals ex- exist when they are so, you know if they're gonna happen and then yeah. like a rough idea of what the games was gonna look like at least now you know people can like lay out their season um I ideally put some sort of long-term planning in and peak for whatever they need to peak for, um, you know, and, and, and get the job done. So I'm excited. I'm excited for this season. Yeah, cool. I, I, I am too. And I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying as well. And I think that we could just keep on going back and forth, and but I just wait and see what happens and, and keep moving forward and doing our best. Right. So, yeah. Um, lastly how can people find out more about only training how can they get involved how can you know you guys help people uh websites www.only-training.com is our website um wish i knew our instagram handle only training on instagram it's like it's training dot only but i think if you typed in only training you'll find it um it's bright colors. It's hard to miss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, our Instagram my, handle is um, Gib underscore only training. Yeah. And mine's, mine's Dave, David, only David, only training, I believe. Cool. Yeah. Awesome guys. Well, I appreciate your time. And uh, I think what you guys are doing is really cool stuff. So I would definitely recommend people go and check out what you guys are, are doing. Sign up for, for a month and see what you guys have going on there. Um, and, uh, really appreciate your time. So if you guys yeah. ever need anything, reach out and, uh, I will talk to y'all soon. Yeah. Thanks, no, Joe. Uh, yeah. Thanks Joe. Thanks for having us. You bet. Hey guys, that was my podcast with Dave Spur and John Gibson of Only Training. You can get to their website by going to only-training.com. And I highly recommend that you do so if you're looking to excel in the sport of fitness or CrossFit or you have some competitions coming up. And like I mentioned in the show, I think that it is important that if you are going to be consuming someone's material like that, someone that puts in a lot of time and effort into the program, you know, go ahead and play, pay the few dollars per month to try out the program. You know, maybe it's a great fit or maybe it isn't, but I can tell you that these guys have enough good information that it's at least worth your money and time to try it out and see what they're offering and see if it helps you to accelerate your fitnessing. So like I said, you can do so by going to only-training.com. If you have questions, you can go to training.only on Instagram if you have any questions um, and just a cool place to follow what they're up to. So you can get to all of the show notes 
by going to the get better slash 23, where I'm going to have all of the links to everything that we've mentioned here in the show today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you on another podcast soon. Thank you for listening to the Get Better Project, Get Better Project, hosted by Joe Bauer. If you'd like to leave us a podcast review, head over to the getbetterproject.com slash iTunes. Now get going and take action on something that will make you better today. Better today.